Hi, I'm Devin Moore, your host for Humanity Rising's Race to Speak Up podcast and founder of Hashtag Race to Speak Up, an anti-bullying organization. The Race to Speak Up podcast is a place where we have open and engaging conversations about bullying prevention, how to be upstanders, and how we are making a positive change in our communities. So the question now is, how do you race to speak up? Hello, and welcome to the Race to Speak Up podcast. I'm your host, Devin Moore. Today's guest is Kirk Smalley. Kirk is the president of Stand for the Silent, an anti-bullying campaign. Stand for the Silent was started in 2010 by a group of high school students in Oklahoma after they heard the story of Kirk and Laura Smalley's son, Ty Smalley. At 11 years old, Ty took his own life after being suspended from school for retaliating against a bully that had been bullying him for over two years. Stand for the Silent exists as a platform to allow Kirk and Laura, Kirk's wife who sadly passed away this year, to share their story and offer education and tools that will prevent their tragedy from happening to another child. The mission is to continue to change kids' lives and bring awareness to bullying and the real devastation it causes. Since May 2010, Kirk and Laura traveled to over a thousand schools and spoke with over one million kids. On March 10th, 2011, Kirk and Laura met privately with President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama in the White House prior to attending the first ever White House conference on bullying. I met Kirk through the student-led movement, Humanity Rising. Kirk and I shared the panel for Humanity Rising's Empowering Youth to Change the World. I'm extremely thankful to have Kirk here for the Race to Speak Up podcast. Welcome, Kirk. How are you? Doing well. Thank you for having me, Devin. Well, I want to thank you again for being here. Now tell us, Kirk, about your journey, about how your journey began. I know it's heartbreaking and very traumatic, but please take us, uh, please take us back to, well, Ty and losing your son to suicide. Well, um, you know, 4,094 days ago, I left for work at, at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, My wife, Laura, and my 11-year-old son, Ty, they left the house a couple hours later to go to school. Laura actually worked at the school that Ty went to, Devin. She took that job so she could be near our boy, you know. She wanted to be off work the same days that Ty was out of school. You know, Laura and Ty were, were best friends. They pretty much together 24 seven on that particular day. Ty was sitting in the gym with his best friend. They, they were waiting on class to start. And this kid that had been picking on him for over two years came up and started picking on him again. I guess that day, Ty finally had enough. He retaliated. Now the uh, the second guy, he's he's always the one that gets caught. You know, it seems like. The disturbance drew the teacher's eye and she looked over and she didn't see the kid come up and push Ty. She saw Ty retaliate. She saw him push the kid back. So he's the one that got in trouble. He was sent to the office. He was suspended for three days. And they, they called his mama and she went and picked him up and took him home. They, they were shorthanded that day at work. Laura had to go back. She 
told Ty to do his homework, told, told him to do his chores, told him we'd talk about it when we got home. Laura came home at 2.38 p.m. on May 13th, 2010. She found out that the boy hadn't done any of his homework. Didn't, didn't do any of his chores and Instead, I had uh, he, he, he killed himself on our bedroom floor. I, I got a phone call that day at, at 2.39. Color ID said it was Laura, so I answered. She was screaming. Couldn't understand anything. She kept trying to tell me. She just, she just screamed. I guess finally I, I screamed back at her. I, I told her, baby, you got to stop. You got to tell me what's going on. She managed to say he's dead. He, sh he shot himself. You know, I, I, I actually asked her who. <laughs> said, Ty. So, ever since that day, Laura and I, we pretty much traveled all over the world, anywhere we were invited. Talking to families and communities, and kids. Trying to make sure that what happened to Ty didn't happen again to another kid, you know, to another family. In the past four years, I've been to 1,597 schools, talked to a little over a million, 600,000 kids all over this world. Devin, the the statistics in this country are astounding, man. They, they're out of hand, you know. We're losing kids to this on a daily basis. In the past seven years, we've lost over 66,000 children to suicide because of being bullied in America. 66,000 babies. I'm telling you, one is way too many. We got to make it stop. Kirk, I 
am truly sorry for your losses. Now, let me tell you, I am sorry for your loss with Ty, and I'm sorry for your loss with your wife, Laura. How do you push forward? I made a promise to my boy uh, one month and seven days after Ty killed himself. It was on Father's Day, and I promised him that I would stop bullying in this world. And Devin, I've, I've never in my life broke a promise to my boy. And I know that I have to be the best person, the best man that I can be, so that someday I can hold my son and my wife again in my arms. And I know that Laura was very supportive of what we do. I know how hard she fought for children, how much she loved kids. And so I do what I do for her and Ty now. And for people that have children that are being bullied so that they don't end up in the position that I'm in. And they don't live the nightmare I live. Kirk, the work that you're doing is definitely extremely important. Now I want you to tell us why, why do you think it's so important to address bullying? Well, you know, as a society, we've kind of lost the ability to communicate with each other. I know everybody thinks that's that's probably not correct, but you know we we communicate on social media now. We communicate across internet waves, but we don't sit down as a family and we don't eat dinner together at the dinner table and have meaningful discussions. Not very often we don't. You know, television and social media, they're raising our kids. And it's time we learn how to communicate again with them as a family. You know, we gotta gotta know what's going on in each other's lives, Devin. We gotta gotta have our finger on that pulse. And we've lost the ability to do that. And we got to find a way to get that back. I definitely agree with you. There is almost just like this, it's a disconnection. And we need to establish that connection. I know that it will definitely help a lot, a lot of people. A part of Stand for the Silent, you have, um, or as a part of Stand for the Silent, you have assemblies where you speak in front of students. Can you tell us about them? Yeah, um, we go anywhere that, that we're invited and we'll do a 90 minute presentation at schools and communities and for different community organizations. Uh, we use three of the students from the, the school. Uh, to help with the assembly. Um, we start out, we play a video. It's a, uh, a music video by a girl named Morgan Frazier called Hey Bully, and it kind of sets a tone. And then one of the students will uh, read a brief history of how Stand for the Silent got started. And then they introduce five chairs that have pictures in them that are sitting on stage. And they read a paragraph about each of the, the children that those chairs represent. And each of those children have taken their own lives due to bullying. And the last chair belongs to Ty. They introduced me. I speak for about 30, 40 minutes. Then we play another video. Um, and then we read the pledge out loud that the kids wrote that started Stand for the Silent. And then we ask them if they'll join us. 
and if they'll help make this stop in their school and their community. And then kind of do a, a closing a series of questions. Will you take a stand? Will you help us make this change? Will you be a part of the solution? And that's about it. We leave information at each school we go to on how they can start a chapter of Stand for the Silent. Uh, it's easy. doesn't cost anything. It's a way to help keep our message going. Chapters, they help keep the message alive, help keep, keep the kids interested and, and busy. And, you know, uh, they share resources with all our chapters, and best practices and things that aren't working, things that are working for other schools, that kind of thing. So. Kirk, I want you to tell us more about the pledge. But before I, um, at, but before you do, can I actually read the pledge and then you just talk about it? Sure. Okay. From this day forward, I promise to respect those around me as well as respect myself. I am somebody and I can make a difference. I can make another feel loved. I can be the helping hand that leads another back to the path of hope and aspiration. I will not stand silent as others try to spread hatred through my community. Instead, I pledge to lift up those victims and show them that their life matters. I will be the change because I am somebody. Kirk, this is a great message and a great pledge. And I know that there's a lot of truth in that. Can you explain it to us? Well, you know, a group of high school kids started Stand for the Silent when they heard about what happened to Ty, Devin, and, and they actually wrote that pledge. And, you know, it, it really means a lot to me. Uh, you know, we, we have little wristbands that say I am somebody on them and we give them to all the kids that we speak to. And apparently they mean a lot to those kids. Uh, you know, you break that pledge down into different segments and what it's telling you is that you have to believe in you and you have to believe in each other. And we have to allow each person to be who they are and we got to love that somebody just the way they are you know that's basically what it means to me and um you know not allowing hatred to spread throughout your community not being a part of that not uh you know, condoning the actions and the hatefulness of others don't be that bystander that's got the cell phone out, what you know, trying to videotape something to be Facebook famous for five minutes when you can actually raise your voice and in support of the victim and say, stop, leave him alone. You know, it's a proven fact. Bullying will stop 99% of the time within 10 seconds if somebody speaks up about it. You know? We've got to start standing up for one another and start treating each other with dignity and respect. That's very true. We do need upstanders. And that's why it's important to have upstanders. A part of your message, Kirk, is you hold up the love sign. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, the, uh, the Stand for the Silent Kids, they actually... Uh, they use that hand sign that, that means it's the American sign language symbol that means I love you. And, you know, our youth in this world are so intelligent and they, they actually figured out a way that they could text message our hand sign. They use the letter, the small letter L, the small letter M and a capital L. So L M L and they can actually text message each other or our hand sign for I love you. You know, it doesn't just mean I love you to us. It means I support you. It means I got your back. You know. 
something as simple as from across the room, you don't have to say a word. Let somebody know that you got, you got them. You know, they're not alone. And that can mean so much to somebody. What stories are the youth sharing with you that lets you know that we must continue to share this anti-bullying message? Well, you know, I get messages from literally hundreds and thousands of kids that I speak to. And, you know, I told you that we have some, some really astounding numbers in our, our world right now. One out of four children in America will actually have a plan on how they would take their own life before they graduate from high school. 25% of our kids actually have a suicide plan before they graduate. And a lot of those messages I get, Devin, they're from, from those kids that have a plan. They say, I am that one in four. I've actually planned out exactly how I was going to take my own life, how I was going to kill myself. I've had kids say I was going to do it tonight. When mom and daddy were asleep, I had it all planned out, all figured out exactly how I was going to do it and what I was going to do. And after hearing you speak, Kirk, I'd, I don't want to do that no more. And I want to help you make that stop. And I get thousands of those type of messages. But you know what? Even though I get those kind of messages and they're, they're very important that, that tell me that I'm, I'm doing the right thing and I'm helping babies and I'm, I'm helping save young lives. Some of the other messages I get from kids are from actual bullies that say, I never realized that what I'm doing could cause something like what happened to your son. I never knew. And I want to stop. And I want to help you make it stop. You know, Devin, most of the time, kids that are bullies, they've, Bullying is a learned behavior. They've, they've learned that, that behavior somewhere. Maybe they're being bullied at home from a parent. Maybe it's an older sibling. You know, I call it my kick the dog theory. You know, I go to work. I'm, I have a bad day. My boss is mean to me, you know. He, and I come home and I take it out on the wife and kids. And then the kid, he goes outside and he kicks the dog because that's the only thing below him on the pecking order that, that he can pass his pain down to. And I think that's what bullying's all about. I mean, you feel inadequate in something. You, you feel not good enough. You feel powerless. And so you try to feel better about yourself by making someone else feel worse about themselves. You try to rid yourself from that pain that you're receiving from someone or from those inadequacies by passing it to someone else. But you know what, Devin, that doesn't work. No matter how much I hurt I can't pass that pain to you and make it go away. I will still hurt. And if we can get these bullies to see that, and if we can get people to understand that when you're hurting, you don't have to hurt someone else. And if we find a way to help each person that is hurting feel like they belong, like they matter, like they are good enough, then we can stop bullying. Kirk, you are an inspiration for so many. You have Stand for the Silent Chapters. How can people start Stand for the Silent Chapters? Well, it's really easy. You, uh, you go to our website, standforthesilent.org, and you click on the, uh, I think it's the four schools tab on, on the drop down. And uh, 
if you scroll down, you'll see a place. I think it's a like a blue colored button that says download a stand for the silent chapter starter pack. And, you know, basically uh, they need if, if it's uh, youth, uh, children that are starting the, the chapter, they have to have at least one adult to be an advisor or a sponsor. Uh, it can be someone at the school or it can be a parent. Um, they hold an election to appoint their president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, that kind of thing, uh, develop a mission statement, which in all that downloaded material that you can print out, uh, it gives you a copy of a mission statement, an example of everything. Um, they pick a name for their chapter and then they email that to me. And once I get that information, I forward it to our board of directors and we vote and get their chapter approved and then we get them up and running we put them in touch with our national chapter liaison lisa and tracy and you know they start sending them resources uh various things like that so like i say it's easy it's really an easy thing to do it's a great way to help spread our message What's been the most rewarding part of your journey? I would like to be able to tell you that the most rewarding part of my journey was knowing that I've saved young lives. Um, but I don't know that, that that would be the most rewarding part of my journey. I think knowing that I've made a change in this world, um, that I've made an impact in this world, that I have instilled something in the hearts of a lot of the children that I've spoken to that, want, that have made them want to change this world, knowing that they will continue my work long after I'm dead and gone. And this fight is not going to be over when Kirk isn't here anymore. And it will continue. And, and hopefully our, our army against bullying will grow. Um, I think that would probably be the most rewarding thing in, in knowing that, that, I've made a difference in, in enough lives that they have decided that they want to make a difference in this world. Kirk, my last question for you is, um, can you tell us your social media platforms and your website? We have, uh, actually, we have an Instagram account, which is uh, SFTS org. Um, we have Twitter, which is SFTS org. And then we have two Facebook pages. Well, actually, we have one page and one private group. Uh, the Stand for the Silent, in parentheses, official Facebook page. And then we have a Stand for the Silent group. And you can link to those from our website, all of our, our social media, uh, if you just find the little icons. Um, the, the, Stand for the Silent group on Facebook is kind of an amazing little little thing. Uh, it it averages around forty four thousand members. There are adults and children in there. Um, it's a private group. Kids can come there and and talk about the issues that they're facing. Parents come and they ask you know for help uh, when they're dealing with their child being bullied and things like that. Uh, and you can't share anything from the group. So, you know, it's kind of a safe space online for these kids. And, and it's kind of a really neat little community of, of caring like-minded individuals. You know, we have, I don't know, probably about 335,000 on our official page and they're from all over the world, but uh, the group, it kind of stays usually around 40, 45,000, uh, 
people and and like i say it's kind of a neat little close-knit community of like-minded people that have been through a lot of the same things that can support each other um our website is www.standforthesilent.org and uh, you can contact us through the website there's a contact form there and i will answer any questions anybody has from that that email you know well kirk i want to thank you for being here and thank you for sharing your story with us i know it's painful and by you sharing it helps others well i appreciate you having me on and devin i i gotta thank you uh knowing that there are people in this world like you that are fighting for others and trying to, to raise awareness of what's going on in this world. You know, that gives me a lot of faith back into the, the human race. Uh, little brother, you, you keep up the good work and you keep fighting the good fight. This world needs people like you, Devin. And I love you. I love you too. We're both holding up our hands dealing with the love sign. So thank you, Kirk. And thank you all for listening. I hope to see you at future Race to Speak Up podcasts. If you have any questions about the Race to Speak Up podcast, feel free to contact me at race to speak up at gmail.com. Make sure to follow at Race to Speak Up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for updates on future podcasts. Make sure to join the Humanity Rising movement. We're a student-led movement to create a better world through service. There are many ways to participate and you'll be eligible for service learning hours and scholarship opportunities. Visit www.humanityrising.org for more information. And remember to ask yourself this question, how do you race to speak up?